Howdy Doody, my name is Susie and this is part three of making coffee filter peony flowers. And this is the part where we're making the leaves. Now the leaves, there's a pattern for the leaves and there, and there is about five or six patterns and you can certainly cut them out yourself, but this is a good guide to start off with. And in order to get the color that we want for our leaves, we have to use acrylic paints. Well, we don't have to use acrylic paints, but I found that using the food coloring, it takes a lot of food coloring to get the depth of color, and it didn't give me the texture that I wanted in the paper. So you can see a dry, filter that's painted with acrylic paint is quite stiff as opposed to as opposed to a coffee filter that is dyed with food coloring so you can tell the difference we want the leaves to be fairly stiff so that we can cut them trace them glue them onto our wire to create our lifelike leaves like this. So I used the round coffee filters and for the leaves, not only do you have to use acrylics, but you have to paint one coffee filter at a time and you're gonna paint it on both sides. And so I've just pre-mixed um, and you use quite a bit of the acrylic paint. So in order to create this dark green, I use blue, light, a light green, a yellow, and a little bit of black. And those colors that I used to create this dark leafy green, or what I thought was dark and leafy. So a great way to do this, this is the old um, aluminum foil that you put on the bottom of your oven. And it works really good because this does get very messy. And then I've just got a toothpick or a chopstick or a toothpick or whatever. This enables you to hold your coffee filter in place while you paint it. And you're going to give it a full, a nice coat of the acrylic paint. And the toothpick just, it just helps you not get your hands all mucky, which I've done too. So then you give it a good coat and fully saturate that coffee filter like this. So you're just gonna paint it. So now I've got my coffee filter that's all painted. And then I'm gonna take my toothpick and just help lift it and I'm gonna flip it over to the other side and I'm gonna paint the other side. And I bought these acrylic paints, you can buy them. They're very inexpensive at any craft store. They sell them at the dollar store. So then you paint both sides, but you wanna lift it again. And you wanna go through the trouble of lifting it again and flipping it over again because you don't want it to stick to your pan. So what I would do in this pan, you can get four or five of the filters. Once you've flipped it over and you've painted them all and you've flipped them all over, you're gonna put them in the oven at 250 degree for one minute. This is one sheet or one layer of coffee filter with the acrylic paint and it dries very, very quickly. So at the end of one minute, you're gonna take your coffee filter and you're gonna flip it over to the other side. If you let it go longer than a minute, it may be stuck to your pan. And then you're gonna dry the other side for one minute. Then you're at the end of the one minute, you're gonna take your filter, you're gonna lift it off and you're gonna flip it to the other side. And it should be almost completely dry after you flipped it both sides and that's a total of two minutes. If it's not 100% dry, 
then you can put it in for a third minute. At the end of three minutes, you're going to get a coffee filter that may have a couple of little spots that aren't completely dry. Remove it from the pan and put it on a fresh tin. You can stack them and then just allow them just to allow them to dry naturally. Now, if you don't follow these steps, then your coffee filter is going to be stuck to your pan and it's going to rip when you pull it off. So those are my tips on painting and dyeing the coffee filters. Oh, and one other thing, I tried diluting the acrylic paint with a bit of water because it was easier to spread. Can you see the difference between the two? This is much thicker and opaque than this. This is a little bit flimsier and the color is not saturated all the way through. So it's important that you paint full strength, whatever color that you now like. Now that we've got our coffee filters all nice and dry and ready to go, I'm gonna take you over to the table. I'm gonna show you how to cut out the templates, assemble it and give them a little bit of definition. And then we're gonna add them to our finished flower. And they really do add a lot of character and definition to the flower and essentially your bouquet. So, so now we're almost at the end of our project. This is part three and we're making the leaves and I've got all my filters which are dried and painted and ready to go. And I have attached a pattern template with the leaves and two of the leaves are on the fold only because um, I needed to do that in order to get them on an eight by 11 size page and attached. So attached in a link, I've also got a potential layout for you to place your leaves and you are able to get the three leaf patterns and the leaflets on one filter. This filter is actually creating those base petals for or um, the base leaves for the flowers and you'll also get additional leaflets. But we're only going to be using these patterns to make our leaves. And our leaves are going to look, and our leaves are going to look like this when they're finished. And you can, this is just using three of the petals, but on some of the flowers, I've actually used five of the petals. And I've got just a little design which I'm just using to guide myself um, if I want five leaves or if I just want three leaves. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So now we've got our pattern cut out or we've got our patterns laid out and we're gonna cut them out of our filter and we're going to end up with three different patterns. So three patterns, we're gonna end up with a pattern like this, a pattern like this, and a pattern like this. So four leaves, three leaves, and five leaves. And now that we've got them cut out, all I did was I took a little bit of, and you can use watercolor, but I just love the pastels because they blend in so nicely. And then all I did was I came around the edge of the leaves and this is just creating just a little bit more definition. All these little details make a difference. So I just colored in the outside of the petals and then with a little spare sponge, I blended it in. So now my petals have some shade. You might be able to see it better on this. You can see just a little bit of shade, a little bit of shade on the tips. So I've got these three petals 
And I'm gonna actually grab two extra petals because I'm going to do a set of five and then you can decide if you want three or five or two or whatever. And then with each petal, all I did was I folded it to create a crease. So fold it in half and you've got a crease like this. And we're going to need this fine wire. And this wire is, there is no gauge on it. I bought it from the dollar store, but I will show you. So in terms of movement, you can see this, this does not really move. This is the 18 gauge wire, and this is just this much finer wire. I don't know what the gauge is, but that's the difference in thickness. So I'm using this finer wire. So I'm gonna keep one wire long, and this is 16 inches. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna get some eight inch pieces. So I'm gonna have some eight inch pieces and some 16 inch pieces. So one 16 inch for the center, two eight inch pieces, and one single piece. So I've got three wires. And I'm gonna take the petal with the, or I'm gonna take the leaf with the three petals and I've just scored it along the center and I'm going to use the school glue. I'm gonna create a fine line three quarters of the way up from the base, like this. You're gonna add your wire to it, like this. And then you're just going to fold it Run that bead of glue and just score it with your nail along the wire. And then we're going to open it up and fold it over so that you can't see the seam like this. You can't see the wire. So that's the back and that's the front. And we're going to let that dry. And you will notice that it automatically cups this top leaf because we didn't glue it all the way to the top. So I'm gonna put that off to the side to dry and I'm gonna do the two side petals. And I'm gonna do them on the eight inch wire. Create your crease. This time I'm going to use the glue gun and you can what happens if you use the glue gun. Now you can use the glue gun, but you have to work faster because it's going to glue really quickly and you want to make a very thin line let's see if i can do this and show you so there's a very fine line take your wire yeah this dries like almost instantly if you add too much glue then you're just going to glue your petal in half and this glues immediately, and then you can fold it over to create that creased wire. So you can do it either way. So keep your wire as straight as possible. So as soon as you lay it down, it's gonna tack up. So now I've got my main leaf, which is on my 16 inch wire. And then I've got my two little offshoots. And I've got two extra little leaves. So I've got four leaves on eight inch wires and one on the 16 inch wire. I'm gonna take my 16 inch wire and I'm just going to, and you might want to just pinch that leaf at the bottom like that. You still want to keep this open and I'm just going to add the floral wire to the leaf and you want to pull and twist pull and twist pull and twist and I don't have to go all the way down the wire because I don't have to use the floral tape all the way down because I'm going to actually attach this wire to my flower so, so in the case of my flower like this, we're going to be attaching the leaf directly to the stem. 
and we're going to be wrapping these together so you don't need to wrap it so far down. So now I've got my first leaf and then I'm going to add a little bit of floral tape to my second leaf and then you can add a bead of glue. Just a little bit of glue to get that floral tape started. It's easy to just wrap it. And we only want to wrap about three inches of the wire. And the last leaf, we're not gonna wrap it at all. So I've done a little design, which is a guide. So you can see here, that's my guide. I've got my long stem and I'm going to attach my other two leaves to it. And I've got my leaf that's not covered with floral wire. And I'm just going to bring that down. I'm gonna bring it down a couple of inches from this top leaf. And I'm just going to wrap that wire like that. So it's attached directly to this stem. Then I'll get a little bit of floral tape and I'm just going to attach those two together like this. And with my other leaf that I've got, which I've already added a little bit of floral wire to, I'm just gonna bring it down slightly, but I'm not gonna attach it at the base of the leaf. I'm gonna attach it a little bit further down, and this just creates a little bit more interest. Those together. So now I have something that's like this. And to make these leaves more interesting, I'm just gonna fold them, just give them a little crease, each one of the petals. So you can see, just making those folds, it just gives that leaf some life. Before attaching the leaves to the flowers, and I'm going to attach these two little guys separately a little bit further down, but I take my flower and I would take your flower with your leaf and put it in your vase. I made a lot of flowers. So if you take your vase, you can see how the vase is this tall, then I can position my flower the way I think it's going to look. Above, I want the leaves to show above the vase. So you can use your vessel as a guide. So all I'm going to do is attach this to my stem and I'm just gonna wrap it around, just wrap it around a couple of times. So I've just wrapped it around. I've positioned the leaves where I think they look good. And now I'm going to, actually, I think I want the leaves a little bit closer to the flower. So just judge where you think you want those leaves to fall. So I'm going to start taping from here down. And I'm gonna go down an inch and I'm going to stop because I'm gonna take my next leaf and I'm just going to position it here. And that's in place. And then the fifth leaf that I'm using I want it to uh, be lengthened a bit and I want it to be separated from the stem. And I'm going to attach it wherever it looks pleasing to me. But you see how this leaf is attached to the stem? This leaf is going to be separated from the stem. So I'm going to add it there. And I'm generous with the floral wire because it just covers up so many boo-boos that you might have made. I'll probably cut it down. I haven't decided which vase I'm going to put it in yet. So, and now it just finishes off that peony. So this is it. And let's see how it looks in a vase. So it looks like this. And then we're going to do the exact same thing 
I won't show you again, but we're gonna do the exact same thing with the butt. And in this case, I only used three of the leaves. So you can vary the combination, whatever is pleasing to you so that you can see them because it adds to the bouquet. So here are the leaves that I did for the large peony. And then here are the leaves that I added to the small peony. So I think you can see that the leaves definitely add a lot of interest to the bouquet. You can see what the leaves look like with each one of the flowers that we've made. I think a combination of all of these look fantastic in a bouquet. I've made so many peonies that now I'm gonna have some fun creating lots of bouquets or maybe two grand bouquets. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give me a like. If you try these and you like it, I hope that you share them. And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, happy flower making.